So we all know that large scale of capital is required to combat climate change. Um, therefore, accessing broader funding sources, including both private and public uh, funding sources, is very critical to meet this large scale capital requirement. However, the investors uh, continue to resist integrating those environmental factors into their mainstream uh, investment strategy because they are not sure about how to or whether they can align um, traditional financial factors with environmental uh, factors. So from now on, I'm going to call um, environmental and financial performance as EP and FP. And this EP and FP compatibility is very important, especially for the investors who has fiduciary, bond, uh, fiduciary obligation. You may recall uh, the opening panel discussion yesterday, uh, Dr. Huston and Professor Eccles mentions that the educating these fiduciary bonded investors are very important. So uh, I actually made that slide before <laughs> the opening day, but uh, yeah, I was really glad that you know, our panel discussed, uh, the panelists actually mentioned the importance of this because uh, fiduciary bonded investors have to maximize their profit. So if, uh, as they think, environmental risk are extra financial and thus leading to the suboptimal investment outcome, then um, integrating these environmental factors may uh, breach their fiduciary duties. So therefore, investors registering, uh, register managing those environmental factors into their mainstream investment strategy. However, that we think that this assumption is partly due to the lack of study that really characterized the EP and FP compatibility. Indeed, um, several of our previous presenters mentioned that the, there's no solid, uh, solid consensus on the empirical link between EP and FP, and also the impact mechanism, how uh, the environmental sustainability pays um, or affect the company's value and therefore the financial performance or vice versa is still in debate. And what we also find is uh, previous in, uh, empirical studies put uh, best attention on whether it pays to be green, but not really uh, paying attention to when and why it pays to be green. So um, that actually recalls our opening day, that we need to clarify the risk and return opportunity of uh, low carbon investment. And this is our point of departure. So we think that investors need to better understand the how market evaluates the environmental performance of the firm, and they need to evidence investment strategies indeed available through which that they can align the environmental factors and their investment portfolio performance. So um, thus, this study accessed the empirical relationship between firms' carbon efficiency and their stock market performance. And they, that actually renders three uh, main research questions. One is simply asking whether investors can achieve higher return on their low carbon investment portfolio. And the second, if we were able to observe any uh, returns on this type of um, portfolio, then whether this return is coming from uh, abnormal return or compensation for additional risk. And lastly, we were also looking for what type of companies tend to be carbon efficient or carbon inefficient and try to see if that, can, that discussion can explain some of our research on, uh, in terms of um, stock market performance. So this is how we design to answer those three questions. So to answer the first question, we, uh, develop, we build a, a unique portfolio which is called EMI portfolio. Uh, and this is a um, zero cost portfolio that you long carbon efficient firm stock and you short carbon inefficient firm stock and we analyze their performance. To answer the second question that we use multi asset pricing model and, to, uh, and try to price this EMI portfolio with well known uh, risk factors. And lastly, we use multiple regression analysis to really examine uh, the relationship between firm's characteristic and, um, and carbon efficiency. Our main data set uh, is uh, consists of 736 public US firms, and our sample period is from 2005 to 2015. And we merge uh, four databases, uh, true cost for carbon efficiency, CRSP for stock return um, performance, 
and computes the for variable, uh, variables for farms characteristic and MSCI for ESG rating. As I mentioned, uh, that EMI, this EMI portfolio is unique because it is based on the carbon efficiency or carbon intensity, which is simply the reverse function of carbon efficiency. Because it is based on the absolute carbon emission, and this uh, carbon emission is uh, including both uh, direct and indirect emission from the firm and its supply chain. And we divide that by the revenue of the firm and that year to get the consistent measure of how much carbon emission that the company has to generate in order to make $1 million of revenue. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go a little deeper dive onto our um, methodology and show our main result. So to answer the first question, whether it pays to be green, uh, we build the EMI portfolio. There are several different ways to build this EMI portfolio. One um, simple way, which will be our base case, is single sorted EMI portfolio based on carbon intensity. So basically, we divide a firm in each industry into three groups based on carbon efficiency, which is previous year's carbon efficiency to uh, control the look ahead bias, and rebalancing this portfolio every year. However, um, there are, this value-weighted portfolio may be dominated by size or book to market value of the firm. So uh, we also tested a double sorted portfolio, which is based on carbon intensity and book to market value, and carbon intensity and the size. And this is what we find. So we find our EMI portfolio exhibit large, positive, and statistically significant returns since 2009. So I'm gonna point the, the table upper side that represent the average return on carbon efficient firms and carbon inefficient firms. And the first row stands for the entire sample period, and the second row stands for the later period, which is after 2009. And as you see, uh, the difference between carbon efficient and carbon inefficient firm stock becomes positive and statistically significant in the later period. And if you see the bottom figure, which stands for the, uh, which represent the cumulative return on our EMI portfolios, that you know, we can definitely see the slope of the cumulative return function becomes positive after around 2009. And that red vertical line in the figure stands for the September 2008 when Lehman Brothers filed for uh, bankruptcy and uh, starts of 2008 global financial crisis. So we try to uh, compare this EMI portfolio with other well-known uh, risk-mimicking portfolios. And we find in the later period, the EMI portfolio becomes uh, very attractive in terms of having the highest Sharpe ratio. You may see the, their average return is kind of mid-range compared to other factor-mimicking portfolios, but they have very low standard deviations, so they have the highest Sharpe ratio. So therefore, we went further deeper down to really price this uh, return on EMI portfolio with other factor mimicking portfolios to answer our second research question. So we run the GRS test here, and then you see four equations in tiny font. So um, the equation, the left side of the equation stands for the, the return on the EMI portfolio. And the right size is other factor mimicking portfolio. So basically, what we are looking for is whether our alpha intercept um, is positive and statistically significant. Because if it is so, then it suggests that the return on the EMI portfolio cannot be uh, priced with standard risk factors. And we can imply out of that that investors can earn extra return even after accounting for um, conventional risk factors. So this is a partial snapshot of our um, GRS test. Uh, and this is coming from EMI1 portfolio, which is base case. And uh, you can definitely see that EMI portfolio have uh, positive and statistically significant alpha on the right side, which stands for the later period. And if you see the EMI two and three portfolio, we have even higher alpha. So we 
kind of calculate the range of this EM, uh, the alpha on EMI1 portfolio, and we find that range from 3.5 to 5.4% per year, which is quite large. So now we um, went further to examine the relationship between firm's characteristic and carbon efficiency. And although I have to mention that this is not cultural relationship, um, this is a simple correlation, but what we find is carbon efficient firms tend to be good firms in terms of financial performance, uh, financial stability, and corporate governance. We then check if our uh, Research is robust, uh, robust from the some macroeconomic factors that happen uh, between those um, sample period, which is quite unique period from 2005 to 2015. And we interviewed um, many investment managers and asset managers in the United States and try to see if you know, like try to see if what could be uh, potential factors, you know, potential events or um, something that they can explain this outperformance patterns, especially after 2009. And what come up with is um, uh, some outlier industry may dominate this, uh, this, this outperformance trend, or some oil market fluctuation can be the one, and also unconventional monetary policy after a global financial crisis may lead uh, this outperformance trend. So we actually run several different uh, testings and make sure that you know, our uh, result is not really driven by those uh, potential factors. But for the time matter, I'm gonna just pinpoint one thing, the unconventional monetary policy. What we find is very interesting that uh, after a global financial crisis, uh, the market kept very low interest rate and what happened because of that is bond investors try to move out from their bond market and running into the equity market. However, their investment preference has not been changed, so they are looking for uh, stable and high dividend paying industries. And those industries include uh, utilities, telecommunication, IT, and sub, uh, com consumer surplus, uh, no, consumer staples. So we construct the EMI portfolio again, uh, excluding those industries, and try to compare uh, uh, with our base case EMI portfolio. And as you see in, the, uh, in this figure, uh, the all, all, uh, all different EMI portfolio, including our new one, are moving very similarly together. So to summarize our main findings, that we were able to find the carbon efficient firms uh, start to outperform carbon inefficient firm in stock market, especially after 2009. And that actually gives uh, abnormal return ranging from 3.5 to 5.4% per year. And carbon efficient firms tend to be good firms and our empirical result is quite robust. I want to highlight what could be uh, the contribution or the value of this paper. The first is that we use um, objective environmental performance measure, which is based on the absolute carbon emission data. So you can actually compare not only within the countries or throughout the industries, but across the, uh, across the global scales too. And this emission is also um, consider the emission from the entire value chain. So some companies may outsource their direct emission to avoid some regulations or penalties, but you know, this, um, uh, this carbon intensity uh, variables in our uh, study can really incorporate all these actions together. And um, this, uh, the third one is we have quite representative sample. We tested uh, whether our sample is well representing the, stock, uh, the US stock market universe, and we find the distribution of the, the firm stock is quite similar to the entire um, population. And also we find quite statistically significant result, uh, even after considering a very rigorous risk factor model. Um, and zero cost portfolio is also the unique point because to the investors, they don't have to put any extra cost into uh, to change their investment practices and consider the carbon efficiency. And uh, we also consider, uh, we also control the industry effect because you know some 
uh, industries such as utilities, materials, or energy may dominate the, 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 the performance of the EMI, uh, perform, uh, EMI portfolio. So we control this industry in fact. Lastly, we didn't stop at just you know, saying that you know, EMI portfolio outperformed, but we try to uh, investigate more about you know, what type of firms tend to be carbon efficient and how can we explaining this, uh, explain this uh, performance. However, I have to acknowledge there are some limitations and that actually renders uh, future uh, studies and also some, uh, some of our follow-up studies are actually addressing those issues. And I would like to open the floors after this to really discuss about uh, this and you know, answer those questions together. So first one is whether this alpha of being green can persist. So uh, I cannot really say that uh, we actually observe the sixth uh, risk factor, which is carbon efficiency, because it is a relatively short uh, time period uh, compared to like other uh, conventional risk factors take a decade to really, you know, clarify that you know this is some uh, meaningful risk factor. However, we try to be optimistic here, and then this is really important observation that we have very strong, statistically significant outperformance after 2009. So uh, we try to put up this. But however, we really uh, suggest to see the extensive uh, sample period. Uh, as the, the data can accumulate and, uh, and then run the similar test. And the second is the question, why after 2009? Uh, we were trying to investigate, you know, you know, what would be the factors that can explain this outperformance, but, you know, like more and more we do, we just find that, you know, this alpha is quite robust. So, but we are still investigating what might be the factors that affect this outperformance patterns, and um, and then uh, one of the uh, one of the efforts that we are doing is we are doing the same research on the global scale, so that you know the cro uh, cross country analysis can explain some differences what happened in U.S. and what happened in the European market or Asian market, and whether that can explain some of the result. And also we can we are looking for some new methodology that can uh, address. Um, Cogations and correlation problems. And lastly, the EP measure. Uh, we talk a lot after our um, presentation that you know there's uh, no measure that can fully represent uh, farms' environmental performance or how much they are actually care about the environment. So um, we are trying to use some alternative ESG. Uh, yeah, environmental performance measures um, and try to see if we can uh, replicate the same outperformance trend after considering those, after using those alternative environmental measures. And also, we are also getting into um, studying more about the environmental disclosures, including greenwashing or some alternative data or new data technology that can provide more reliable, more transparent, more consistent environmental performance measure. So that's about it, um, and thank you now for the Q&A.